Welcome to lecture number six for ECE 761 Robotics, Inverse Kinematics of a, of a Puma Robot. Now this is what a Puma robot looks like. It's a robot built by Unimation back in 1978. There have been quite a few variations since then. Still used as uh, basically a teaching type robot with three rotational joints. The base rotates about this stand, off axis though. The shoulder then rotates about here. Here's the elbow, and then there's a wrist. The wrist has an end vector, which can rotate about this axis, spin, and a gripper. With that, you can do things like draw shapes, um, pick up parts, whatever you want. That's a Puma robot. To start with coming up with the inverse kinematics for Puma robot, we first have to come up with the forward kinematics. To do that, we can actually look at two slight variations. The simplest is I've got the base, goes up to the shoulder, rotates about the base. The shoulder is offset a little bit, rotates about the shoulder going up and down, takes you to the elbow, can offset, to the wrist. And here we're going to ignore the tip effector, just going to specify where the wrist of the robot should be. The parameters for the robot then would be uh, twist, going from Z1 to Z2, a displacement in the X direction going from 2 to 3 and 3 to 4, displacement in the Z direction going 0 to 1, 1 to 2, and 2 to 3. Once you specify that, you can specify the robot simply by specifying Q, alpha, A, and D. Uh, note, just to be consistent with the Rhino robot and to keep numbers a little bit simpler, I'm making the numbers 50 and 5 and minus 5. The actual Puma numbers are here. Um, same idea though. Once I have that defined, I can now do forward kinematics just by typing the angles. So this is your position for a Puma robot. And there's actually five joints. So there's the tip position at zero position. If I rotate the base, say one radian, rotate the shoulder by minus one radian, rotate the elbow by oops, three radians, make that two radians. And that's the forward kinematics. Now that I have the forward kinematics, let's come up with the inverse kinematics. This is very similar to the Rhino robot. In this case, I assumed the offset going to the shoulder to the wrist are both five. Those cancel out. So theta one is just the arctangent of y over x, just like it was for the Rhino robot. Uh, the other angles are also just the same as the Rhino robot. So I'll go from the base to the shoulder, shoulder, to the elbow, elbow to the tip. I've got this parameter B. This is the tip minus 50, the offset of the base. Um, there's R. Again, same equations that we did for the Rhino robot. Find the angles theta 1, theta 2, theta 3. Again, theta 2 is actually positive, it's going down, so going up is negative. Um, theta A is arctangent of A over B. Theta C is arctangent C over R over 2. Theta A plus theta C is minus theta 2. And theta 3, if you work out the triangles, this side right here, all angles add up to 180 degrees for right triangle. So it's QC plus 90. Actually, plus that angle equals 180. Uh, that gives you that theta 3 is twice QC to make the angles add up. For the actual Rhino robot, it's a little bit more complicated. In this case, the offsets don't exactly line up. What that does is if you look at the top, I'm going to offset by 10 centimeters going to the shoulder, offset by 5 centimeters going to the wrist. The tip misses the point that I'm pointing at by 5 centimeters. That makes the equations a little bit more complicated for the actual uh, Rhino or actual Puma robots. 
uh, but you can still handle it. Essentially what you do is I point the robot five centimeters to the right of where I want the tip to be, and then you hit it. To calculate the angles, this is the actual distance to the tip. I'm going to create a fictitious point five centimeters away to the right. Doing some trigonometry, W is just the distance to the tip, square root of x squared plus y squared. B is b squared plus 5 squared is w, so b is w squared minus 5. That's kind of the fictitious side view of the robot, that's b. Uh, the angle to the tip, total angle to the tip, is q1 plus qd. qd is the arctangent of 5 over b, so theta1 is actually theta tip, angle to the tip, minus theta d. That's the point where you're shooting 5 centimeters to the right of where the actual target is. Once you find theta1, now just use b for the previous equations, and I have theta2 and theta3. Um, that's the program inverse kinematics, or inverse Puma, which is the inverse kinematics for a Puma robot, which is posted on Bison Academy. I specify the tip position, and it tells me the angles to put you there. To check, to check that the inverse program works, I'll specify the tip position, given node angles, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, and take the inverse, I should wind up at the same points. Take a different spot, uh, 0 0.7, 0 0.2, minus 0 0.6, and these should add up to zero. Gives you plus 0.4. That just forces the tip to be pointing down. Good. So there, the inverse boom is working. Once you have the inverse kinematics, I can do the same thing we did back with the Rhino robot. Specify the tip position. Once I know the tip position, find the angles for the Puma robot. And then given the angles, draw the robot every 10 milliseconds. And it'll trace out a square. That's the inverse kinematics and forward kinematics of the Puma robot. The homework for homework number six is for two separate robots. Find the forward kinematics and the inverse kinematics and verify that the two work, meaning if I calculate the position based on the angles and then go backwards, I should get the same answer. Or kind of more fun, pick a shape. Here I chose a square. You could choose a star, circle, whatever you like. Choose a shape to track and see if the inverse kinematics, forward kinematics work, allowing you to trace out that shape. And just as one last example, this is kind of a fun one. If I specify a ball, here this is the y is time, I'm going left to right along the y-axis. The radius of the ball gets bigger as the circle, and the angle is kind of a spiral. I can draw a spiral around a ball using the same program I did before. Once I specify the tip position, calculate the angles. Once I have the angles, draw the robot, and I can watch the robot tracing out a different shape. That's lecture number six, inverse kinematics for a Puma robot.